Sometimes you can figure it out, sometimes there's no way to figure it out. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it gets in a knot, sometimes it sails along, sometimes it gets in reverse. See, that's not going to change. The last 6,000 years reads like this, opportunity mixed with difficulty. That's how it reads. It isn't going to change. The man says, well, then how will my life change? And the answer is, when you change. Whether I'm talking to high school kids or business executives, my message is always the same. Have you ever noticed that some people don't do well because they major in minor things? Whatever you do, check at the end of the week, the end of the year, and make sure you're not spending major time on minor things. Otherwise, you will wind up with a below average life. Now be Before I get to the four major lessons, here are two phrases to consider. First, life and business are like the changing seasons. That's one of the best ways to illustrate life. It's like the seasons that change. Frank sings life is like the seasons here is the second phrase you cannot change the seasons but you can change yourself now with those two key phrases in mind here are the four major lessons in life to learn the first is learn how to handle the winter they come right after fall with regularity some are long some are short some are difficult some are easy but they always come right after fall remember it isn't going to change two key phrases in mind here are the four major lessons in life to learn. The first is, learn how to handle the winters. They come right after fall. Regularity. Some are long, some are short. Some are short, some are easy. But they always come right after fall. It isn't a change. Key phrases in mind, here are the four major lessons in life. The first is, learn how to handle the winters. They come right after fall. Regularity. Some are long, some are short. Some are short, some are short. But they always come right after fall. It isn't a change. Key phrases, and here are the four major lessons in life. The first is, learn how to handle the winter. Some right after regularity. Some are long, some are short. Some are short, some are short. But they all right after fall. It isn't a change. Key phrases, and here are the four Learn how to handle the winter. Some right after short. Some are short. Summer, but they all right after fall. Key phrases, and here are the middle the winter. Come right after right after fall. Here's 
that we know of, that's pretty reliable. And what a great place for spring right after winter. If you were going to put it somewhere, that would be the place to put it. God is a genius. Hey, days follow nights. Isn't that terrific? Opportunity follows difficulty. Expansion follows recession. And all with regularity. You can count on it. Everybody has fear. Everybody has fear. But you don't let your fear have you. Tonight, if you're going to do what God has called you to do, you have got to reverse the process. Stop exposing your fear. Bury your fear up under the blood of the cross and the word of Jesus Christ and lift up your talent and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And when you switch that process, demons tremble and hell gets nervous. Curses are broken and yokes are destroyed. People are set free and your life is built over again. Do you have the courage? Somebody shout yes! When God gives you an opportunity, you need to work your magic on it and turn it into something. Brother five turned it into ten. Brother two turned it into four. And brother one, well, he kind of messed up my story a little bit because he kind of just, what had happened was, uh, he, he, he never turned his opportunity into anything because of his fear. And the Lord sent me to ask you a question. What are you going to do with what he has given you? What are you going to do with the life he has given you and the talent he has given you and the time he has given you and the influence he has given you and the gifts he has given you and the resources he has given you and the creativity he has given you? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? There's somebody in the hospital wishing they could be where you are right now. There's somebody on a breathing machine wishing they could be where you are right now. But look at you. I know you got some problems and I know you got some issues, but you combed your own hair. You got up out of the bed. You brushed your own teeth. You dressed yourself. What are you going to do with what God has given you? Anyway, the story goes on. The master took a journey, went into a far country, and he came back. When he came back, he came back, walked up to brother number five, brother number five, said, hey, I've been waiting on you to get back. I got something to show you. Remember when you gave me five? Shazam! I'm bad. He did that little Michael Jackson thing. Ten. Brother number two says, excuse me, let me show you some Shazam. Four. I imagine in my mind, brother number 10 looked at brother number four and said, how can you be that happy about four? I got 10 and you got four. And brother number four, if he had any sense, would have told brother number 10, I may not have as many as you have, but both of us have a 100% increase over where we started. What I want you to see out of that is that God does not expect you to work with what he has not given you. God is not holding you to somebody else's standard. What God is holding you to is to work that thing on your level. You can't sit around and say, I wish I had more. If I had more, I'd do more with it. No, you don't have to give an account for what God gave me or God gave her or what God gave him. You do have to give an account for what God has given you. And rather than to compare yourself with somebody else, you need to work that thing on your level. You have to write it down. It's a principle of success. Anybody can be successful. You just have to know the principles of success. See, I know the principles of success. I could stop and go start selling tomatoes, and I could go make a lot of money selling tomatoes. You know why? Because I know the principles of success. The second principle you need to know is you have to write it down. But that's the scripture. That's Habakkuk 2 and 2. Write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. I don't know but four five, but I know four five good ones don't. Everything I've ever dreamed and asked God for, I done wrote it down. Everything I ever had had come from a piece of paper. And everything extra I got come from his grace. I got stuff, he gave me stuff more than on the paper. But see, you ain't got no time for that though. So here's the exercise I want all of you to do. I'm just telling you how to be successful. This is how I did it. I ain't, I ain't gonna take no course. 
I don't have no plan. I flunked out of school. I have no education. I got no education. You know, I did a uh, commercial for DeVry, I mean for uh, Strayer, Strayer University. I'm about to sign the deal, big deal. And the lady comes in the room, black lady. She's the head of marketing. She said, Mr. Harvey, before we sign this deal, I understand that you didn't complete your degree. I said, no, I flunked out of school. She said, well, I think it would be most effective if you would go back to school as a part of this deal. We'll pay you the money we said, but we'd like for you to complete your education. It would send such a riveting message to everybody. I said, what, what, what is I'm going to school for? What is I'm going to school for? <laughs> I know that lady wanted to say, ain't it obvious? <laughs> First of all, you stupid. I said, what is I'm going to school for? She said, to complete your education. I said, but, but what is I'm going to go for? She said, what is I'm going to go for? That threw her in the side. Yeah, well, what is I'm going for? She said, to complete your ed education and send a message to people about being successful. I looked at this lady. I said, ma'am, I can't go back to school. She said, why? I said, because I'm too old. She said, you're never too old to get education. I said, but let me ask you this way. Why would I go back to school? Because what is I'm going for? You didn't understand that. So why would I go back to school? She said, to further your education. I said, why are all these people getting education? To have a better life. What course do you offer that's going to give me a better life than the one I got right now? Because right now, I'm making a lot of money with these jokes, lady. And I don't see why I would stop telling these jokes to come and go to Strayer University. She said, well, if you don't go back to school, Mr. Hart, we won't be doing the deal. So I got on button my suit up. She said, where are you going? I said, you just said if I don't go back to school, we ain't finna do the deal. Clearly, I'm not finna go back to school. She said, why are you so insistent about not going back to school? I said, you have any idea how much money I'm making? Why would I stop doing that to go back to school? And then she made me mad. I just said, you know what, lady? She said, there are people with multiple degrees. I said, let me, if you got one degree and it ain't working for you, why would you go get another one of them? <laughs>